Flyj Sim is well known for its high quality aircraft, leaving many to ask the question, should I buy the 727 or their 737-200 Classic? Today we're going to compare both models and help you inform your decision if you're trying to decide between the two. Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real-world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high-quality aviation content and entertainment. We frequently see people on the forums trying to answer this question. If I'm only prepared to buy one FlyJ Sim aircraft, which one should I buy? The 737-200 or the 727? So we are going to compare and contrast these two FlyJ Sim models for you right now. The 737-200 is the slightly newer aircraft in the real world. It has a crew of two, a pilot and a first officer, whereas the 727 was launched a few years before in 1963 with a crew of three. Again, a pilot, first officer, and this time a flight engineer. Both models by FlyJ Sim come with a very similar uh, GUI or graphical user interface. The menu system launches from the side. We have performance cards. These uh, help to simulate the calculations that would have been done by the flight engineer on the 727, or I'm not really sure who got stuck doing that on the 737. They both have loadout menus, which help you do your weight, your balance, load cargo, load passengers. They have maintenance menus. You can turn on or off the maintenance feature. So if you like the aircraft to be fresh and reliable every time, you can do that. If you want the added realism of parts breaking and wearing out, you can turn the maintenance system on. Both have a scrollable checklist system and an interesting fact you can go and edit this so if you want more or less information or specific notes for yourself you can go edit those files yourself both aircraft are older and uh, so for realism's sake you can fly them slant alpha meaning there will be no fms system on board you'd be doing entirely with radio navigation you can also install the optional uh, SIVA, SIVA, I'm not sure really to this day how you say that, C-I-V-A plugin, or you can click the option to have the default Laminar FMS. And uh, we have a tutorial on that if you need help using it. Now the 737-200 cruises at a slightly slower speed, so this is where the performance is actually a big part of the consideration. Quality-wise, these aircraft are uh, amazingly well done and they both obviously feel like they came from the same developer. If you like one, you'll like the other. Uh, but the slightly slower cruise speed of the 737-200 is around Mach 0.82. The 727, with its three engines, achieves a cruise speed of about Mach 0.86, which is obviously faster. The smaller 737 can get off the ground in about 6,000 feet, and of course that is all relative to runway condition, weight, air density. But uh, generically speaking, 6,000 feet. For your 727, that's about 8,300 to 8,400. One important thing to note when you purchase this, if you get the 737-200, you get one model, the 737-200. If you pick up the 727, you are actually getting a pack with three models. The Dash 100, which is a shorter fuselage. The Dash 200, which was pretty much the one if you were around in the era of 727s that was the most ubiquitous and the freighter version so in a way the 727 does give you more aircraft for your money from a price standpoint uh, fly j sim is currently selling the 727 pack for 59 dollars and 95 cents and for 10 dollars more you can get the 737 pack for $69.95. One of the main differences that I think really is a deal breaker for a lot of people and might factor into that price difference is the addition of a passenger cabin. Uh, 
the 727 models have no passenger cabin and the only exterior sort of passenger function you get is the rear air stairs can be deployed on the 737 200 you get a full cabin the doors open the cargo doors open you get front air stairs you get rear air stairs and inside you get a level of detail that's really above and beyond what I've seen in most of the full-size airliners we have movable window shades we have movable overhead bins and I, I think for me this is a first I don't believe any of my other aircraft have overhead bins that open and close both of these aircraft though have excellent excellent documentation there's probably more than you really will want to read but it has normal procedures it has emergency procedures there's fantastic graphics and visuals they've done to show you how you would fly certain approaches and it's just really worth your time to look through those they are incredible for both the 737 and the 727. The uh, livery situation is pretty interesting. Uh, FlyJ Sim has gone to the trouble of stockpiling the liveries on their own site. So you can go to FlyJ Sim's website, and I'll show that to you here. You select which one you want to look at, 737 or 727, and inside you will find many many I'm not looking at it right now but I'll have the image for you I believe there's over a hundred liveries for these and so you can download the ones you want uh, this is fantastic I can't tell you the endless hours I've spent searching for various liveries on different aircraft and if you ever use the terrible search engine on the X-Plane forum you probably already know Google is a better shot so FlyJ Sim has done the hard work for you the liveries are available here Sounds on both of these are fantastic. Uh, I really think they did a great job with the sounds. You've got good interior aircraft immersion from it. Uh, the exterior, the F mod, does some neat things in the 3D environment, and I don't find the sounds lacking on anything. Really excellent. From an operational standpoint, I would say Fly J Sim is about as close to flawless as any of the aircraft I've ever downloaded for X Plane. Um, occasionally, when I see the updates, I'll go and look to see what bugs they fixed, mostly because I never seem to find these bugs. So uh, I do quite a bit of X Plane flying, and I'm not running into errors, so I suspect you will not either. The uh, fidelity to the real world seems to be extremely high. It's not necessarily so high that you will lose your mind in complexity, but I should note that uh, obviously the 727 will be more complex. Why is that? Well, it's fairly obvious. It is a cockpit designed for a three-person crew, whereas the 727 was designed for two people. So you will be doing the work of three in the 727 and the work of two in the 737. Now on the plus note, they both follow what I call Boeing logic. They are derived from the 707. I'll show you a comparison shot here. Here's the 707's flight engineer panel and the 727's. Very similar. You're just losing one engine functionally, so the layout stays about the same, and that would have helped for type rating and cross training. Looking at the overhead panel on the 727, you'll notice, again, it's very similar to the 707. The front panel, as well as the pedestals, are pretty similar between 707, 727, and the 737-200. The biggest difference you're going to find, we have no flight engineer's panel in the 737-200, so all of those functions, fuel pumps, batteries, pressurization, got moved overhead. So let's take a moment to look at the overhead of the 737-200. Now this might not be very daunting to you. I'm going to make an assumption that many of the people watching this video 
are Zebo 737NG SIM captains. And if you are familiar with that layout, you will find this very similar. To be perfectly honest with you, I opened up the 737-200 without looking at the manual once, was able to power it up and do a flight without any issues. Now I had already known how to use the 727, so uh, I think the only thing from the 727 that I realized and brought in that you would not use in the Zebo is the flight ground mode on the pressurization panel. So with that little tidbit of knowledge, I was ready to go. So if you like the Zebo, I'm pretty sure you can jump right on into the 737, no problem. If you like old school classic aircraft, both of these are going to be just an absolute joy to fly. If you enjoy going back in the cabin and hanging out, you're going to need this 737-200. If that's not really a big deal to you, you spend your time on the flight deck. You've got a few more options with this 727 between doing freight routes and passenger routes. Um, there are a couple other considerations you might have here. If you're doing virtual airlines or trying to simulate some other real world things, you have uh, a variety of different performance levels here. So the range of the 737 is about uh, 2,600 nautical miles. You actually have less range on the 727 with 2,250 on the 100 and a little bit less at 1,900 on the 200 model. You can stuff more passengers into the 727-200 than anything else. It'll hold about 134. Uh, I'm pulling those numbers from somewhere else. I will have to check if that's exactly the number that you're going to be allowed to put in on FlyJ Sim. There's always a lot of variation in these configurations. Uh, even between airlines, it just depends how much space they left between the seats half the time. The uh, 100 model should hold about 106 passengers whereas the 737-200 holds 115. From performance and handling, just you know, my own opinion, the 727 I find very satisfying, but uh, I, I felt like I had to be very careful with it, particularly on approach. If you get behind the aircraft, you're gonna have problems. The old JT-8s do not spool up that quickly, so if you uh, get behind on airspeed, which is always a very bad idea, you might not be able to throw, uh, spool up those engines in time to save yourself. Uh, on the other hand, the 737-200, it only has those two engines. It, uh, I, I feel like when it's heavy, it takes forever to get it up to cruise altitude. But that said, the 737 just trims out so beautifully. I think of all of my full-size airliners, the FlyJ Sim 737-200 is my favorite hand flyer. The first uh, full trip I had done with it was in Germany uh, over to Innsbruck. Uh, I should say from Germany to Innsbruck. And I got up to cruise. I flew to cruise by hand. And I was going to kick in the autopilot. But it just trimmed out so nicely. And the winds were good that day. I just flew the whole trip by hand. It was just an absolute joy because a lot of these large airliners can be a bit of a beast. On that note, uh, auto throttle is not something from this era of aircraft. So you will be managing the throttles yourself. On the 737-200, I found it just kind of held. You could, you could basically find your spot and leave it there with uh, a minimal amount of monitoring. The 727 seemed to require a lot more of my attention to maintain airspeed, you know, a little... A little more power, a little less. Needs a little more now, it needs a little bit less. So uh, if you're used to auto throttle on a Zebo, for example, or any of the other more modern aircraft, both of these are going to require a lot more attention on your part. Uh, so there won't be any, you know, overnight flights where you wander off to the kitchen or do something else for an hour and come back because you will not have the auto throttle to keep you in the air. So if you have any questions about these two models, I would personally recommend either of them to you. My real answer to the question, which one should you buy? My answer is both, uh, and that's exactly what I have done. So I'm enjoying both of these. Thank you to the FlyJ Sim developers. FlyJ Sim, if you watch this video, please, please, please make me a 707. Uh, those of you who are seeing this video and seeing the 707 clips included, that is the now 
no longer available, Michael Wilson version, I don't suspect it's ever coming back to X-Plane. So uh, Fly J Sam, I feel like you are our best hope. Please make us a 707. So once again, this is the Flight Brothers. I'm Tim. Um, if you like this content, drop us a comment below. Any questions, comment below. Like and subscribe for future content. So until next time, remember, plan the flight and fly the plan. Thank <laughs> you.